So question number eight is electrochemistry. Now some of this electrochemistry actually you learn in grade 11. So if you're feeling like you kind of sort of forgot um, what is actually going on and so forth, then please do refer back to your grade 11 content. But nonetheless, let's see what the question says. So the question reads, the electrochemical cell illustrated below is set under standard conditions. Now we know from grade 12 we've got standard conditions and when the standard conditions occur, then something can happen to the reading on, on the cell and so forth and the cell can actually, actually occur in different sets of ways under standard conditions, right? So under standard conditions, that's what we are told, this is the cell that's given. I can already see that this is a galvanic cell. Remember, there's a difference between an electrolytic cell and a galvanic cell. Galvanic cell will, will have two beakers and it will be connected by a salt bridge. I can already see that that is named X. I can see that the V is a voltmeter. I can see that hydrogen gas will be escaping there. I've got platinum that is attached there and I've got um, hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. And on this side, I've got magnesium, and then I've got magnesium two plus ions, also an aqueous solution. So now what I always say when you are actually tackling a question like this, the important thing to do is actually look at your standard table. So now I know that we have a 4A and we have a 4B. I personally like prefer using the, 4, the 4B, but however your teacher has taught you, then you, it's the best one to look. Now once you get, once you have a question like this, it's better to go see on that table which one is the highest. Is magnesium at the top? Is the hydrogen at the bottom? And then you can actually see where and which one actually goes under oxidation and which one then undergoes reduction. By actually knowing that, it actually simplifies so much easier. So what I would actually do if you're answering this question, I would actually say that magnesium is an anode or a cathode and then by the H plus or the platinum, is it actually going undergoing um, oxidation or reduction? But to simplify, let's do it all together one step at a time. So let's look at our first question for question number eight. So number 8.1 says compound X completes the circuit in the cell. We must state only one. The examiner only wants one and we don't want to get penalized by writing them a paragraph. State one other function for compound X. Let's go back to our diagram. I can see that compound X is my, is my salt bridge. So they only want one that you could have said. Now for salt bridge, I'm going to give you two though, but the first one, it ensures electrical neutrality. It ensures electrical neutrality. In a cell, that's, what, that's one of the stuff that a salt bridge does. Or, now remember, you don't have to write both. The examiner just wanted one. You could have also said that it provides a path for movement of ions. It provides, it provides a path for the movement of ions. Movement of ions. Now also remember that you guys must write in full sentences, right? And please don't write um, short sentence or try to shorten the words right in full proper English. Make sure that you've got capital letters so you're actually showing the examiner you know exactly what's happening. So that's 8.1 and then number 8.2 says we must define what is the term anode. Now remember guys when a examiner when the question paper asks for a definition it's not what you understand. A definition is based on precise wording on a certain sus on a certain object aspect, and in this case, it's the anode. Not what you think is an anode, not what happens at an anode, the definition of an anode. And now the definition will always be the same, so you must make sure this is something that you need to learn off by heart. But if we had to define an anode, now usually there's more than one explanation. I'm gonna give you the shortest. It is the electrode where oxidation takes place. You must say electrode. You can't say place, right? Because oxidation and reduction takes place at the electrodes. So the electrode where oxidation, where oxidation takes place. And you cannot fail explanations and definitions because you are lazy to read. I can see here, this is for two marks and we, we have to get the two marks, definitely. So now let's look at number 8.3. 8.3 says I must identify the anode in the cell above. I just want to take it a little bit back. Now we learned an ox and we learned about red K. 
cat. So at the anode, we have oxidation and reduction takes place at the cathode. So if you use your 4A, your standard 4A and 4B table, you must then look which one will be higher, which one will be lower between the two, depending on what your teachers actually taught you. So now if we had to identify which one it was, it will then be my magnesium. Looking at my standard 4B table, it's represented by magnesium. So magnesium will be the anode on the, so anode is where oxidation will be taking place. And remember, we also have oil rig. Let me just write that oil rig. Oil rig, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So my magnesium will be losing electrons where reduction is the gaining of electrons, all right? So identify the anode on the cell. It's always nice to write the symbol or you can write the name, right? So MG is magnesium. Remember capital M, small g and that is then magnesium. That is the anode for this particular cell. Let's look at number 8.4. Number 8.4 says write down the reduction, we must write down the reduction half reaction that takes place in the cell. Now with the reduction half reaction, it's actually very simple, right? You need to actually identify first when, where is oxidation taking place and where is reduction taking place, right? Oxidation is the loss of electrons, so we are losing electrons, whereas with the, uh, with the other one, we are actually gaining, ox with the reduction, we're actually gaining the electrons. So if you're gonna write me the, the reduction half reaction, you must make sure that the electrons are actually in the correct side of this balanced equation. So where does reduction take place? I must write a full, um, a full reaction for number 8.4.1. I've got 2H+. plus. Remember, you, you always need to actually add your charges. It's very crucial in chemistry that you add your charges. I've got 2E-, minus, and then I've got H2, and that is my reduction half reaction. You cannot fail this. This you find on your table, and this was also going for two marks. Let's look at 8.4.2. I must give the name or the formula, the name or the formula of the reducing agent in the cell of the reducing agent in the cell. Now, most of you guys get confused by reducing agent and the oxidizing agent, right? If you understand oxidation and reduction, then it's just vice versa when they ask you about the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. And in this case, I say name or formula of the reducing agent in the cell. The reducing agent will be our magnesium. They do say the name or the formula. Remember the name will be magnesium. Magnesium. And my formula will be Mg. Just want to take it up a little bit. The reducing agent is magnesium. I just want to show you here. By the anode, oxidation takes place at the anode. Oxidation is then our reducing agent. And that is then why magnesium will then again be our reducing agent for this. Now, the examiner is trying to catch you out here, but you can actually see it's only for one mark. So it's just something that you just had to know. Number 8.5 says I must calculate the initial, so the starting voltmeter reading of the, cell, of the cell under our standard conditions, and this is in for four marks. Again, there's about four formulas that you could have used or chosen from, and I'm, I've chosen this one. So I've got E cell, and I'm gonna say E reduction. And I'm going to say minus E oxidation. E reduction minus E oxidation, right? The initial one. So initially zero minus E oxidation, where the oxidation takes place on my table, it's negative 2.36. And that's the word, the worst is over. I'm gonna put it exactly as it is on my calculator. You really have to put the negative. You don't really have to work it out. But if you're really bad with negative numbers, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm going to get positive 2,36. Um, I could have said negative, negative 2.36, close my bracket. And then that's how I get it as a positive. But now here we were just working with negative numbers. So I'm going to have 2,36. And the SI unit we use for the E cell is then a capital V. Remember, a small V means a velocity, and that is paper number one. We have to use a capital V. 
Let's see what this question says. So now they're telling us that the, the magnesium half cell is now replaced with copper half cell. It is found that the direction, aha, which makes sense, which the direction of the electron flow changes. Now, remember, us replacing magnesium and us replacing it with copper means the direction of the electrons will change because it means that the oxidation and the reducing agents have now changed. Now we must fully explain why there is a change in direction of, electron, of the electron flow by referring to the relative strengths of the reducing agents involved. Now I'm going to write it in full sentences. I'm first going to say, that remember we had H2 which is stronger, which is stronger or, or is, or let me say, is a stronger. H2 is a stronger reducing agent, is a stronger reducing agent. Remember, it's for three marks. So we want to show the examiner exactly what you're doing. So H2 is a stronger reducing agent than my Cu, right? So now we've seen that this and this changing makes H2 a much stronger reducing agent than my copper. And therefore, and therefore, this means that my copper, you can write it as copper 2, or you could have just said Cu, my copper ions are reduced. They are reduced, which means my H2 is then oxidized. is oxidized. Now, if you are maybe having a bit of a problem with this question, I would have go back to my 4A or 4B table and then put my finger on the copper and the magnesium and then the hydrogen and then remove the one and then see how the, the electron flow will actually change because H2 is now a stronger reducing agent than the copper and therefore my copper ions are reduced and my H2 is then oxidized. And that is the last question that we have for question number eight.